Hey, what's going on guys? Reed here and I'm back with another tech video. Now this time we're going to be talking about, just for a little experimental kind of thing that I've done, how to run macOS Snow Leopard in a virtual machine on Windows. For, in this case, we are going to be using VirtualBox. If you need to get VirtualBox, it's at virtualbox.org. And also for this guide, you're also going to need a USB or a way to transfer from a Mac over to here because I recommend that you use a DMG version to like a DMG of Snow Leopard. You can get one of these online. I've already downloaded one by just by Googling Mac OS Snow Leopard DMG, but because the ISOs are not usually retail. So if you get a DMG, you probably want a retail one because that means it was made from a real install CD and Apple will actually use count it and it won't be fake as most people say. So I suggest you do that, and we'll be we'll be talking about how to convert that to an ISO here. So yeah, we're gonna jump right into it. Okay, guys, I am back. We're on Mac now. You'll notice I've already got one downloaded. It's right here. So we're gonna go ahead and convert that to to an ISO now. But I know that we're gonna use Disk Utility in this case. But I know that some of these might take a while to download. That's why I have one downloaded right here. Go ahead and for starts, you're gonna want to mount it. Make sure it's got all these files and make sure it actually is mountable. You shouldn't, you might not be able to run this perfectly normal, but you can go ahead and just make sure that it's mountable. Then you can go ahead and eject it. We're going to open Disk Utility. We're going to go to Images up here. We're going to go to Convert. Select the DMG. Press Choose. Now, in this case, you're going to want to make sure that is set to None. Set this to DVD slash CD master. Go ahead and just convert it. You can leave the name as it is. This may take some time. It usually doesn't take that long, but I'm going to cut out the video while this is running because it checksums it and does all sorts of stuff. But when it's done, you should see a check mark near the little disk icon at the top left of the disk utility window, and you should see that it shows it's finished. Actually, it's running pretty fast. I think I'm going to leave the video running for this. But you'll notice it'll pop up right here as a .cdr. We're gonna, next, we're going to just convert it to an ISO. But usually, yeah, usually it's pretty easy to convert to an ISO from a CDR. In fact, it's so easy, you just simply name the, rename the file extension. So it looks like it's almost done. Okay. Once you see this, there's this check mark I was talking about. You can go and press done and close this. Now we're going to simply rename this to be a dot is. Whoops, I pressed get info by mistake. We're going to want to rename it. I'm going to take off the converted and call it a dot iso. Now, once you do this, you're going to want to press use dot iso. You should notice it should still mount. There it is. Right here. It should still work and everything. So now I'm going to go get my USB and we're going to copy this over. Okay, I got my USB right here. When you, when you do the USB, make sure the format is not a Mac OS or an APFS. That is important. You better check that in Disk Utility because it won't work on your... Okay, so it's XFAT. That is usually what you want. FAT32 has a maximum file size limit of like 4 gigabytes. So you, if you cop, try to copy this, it's probably too big. Yeah, it's like 7 gigabytes. So if you try to copy it to a FAT32 volume, it will fail. XFAT solves that problem, does it in a similar way, but you can don't have a file size limit. Just make sure this doesn't say APFS or Mac OS Extended. So now you can copy this to your USB. You're going to go ahead and get this little pop-up right here. Now mine's going to take some time. This is only a USB 2.0. But really, it, it might, might take some time for you guys out there too. But I'm going to go ahead and cut out the video while this is running. So I will be right back when this is... Okay guys, I am back. We're here. On the Windows computer now, I plugged in the USB. You're gonna if you use the USB to transfer the files, you're gonna want to copy it to a place on your hard drive. 
In this case, I copied it to downloads. When you get the ISO here, do not double click it or mount it. Instead, we're gonna go ahead and open VirtualBox. You're gonna create a new virtual machine. I'm gonna call it OSX. That's what the commands use. I'm gonna select 10.6 Snow Leopard. You can do 32-bit or 64-bit. In my case, I'm gonna do 64-bit because my hardware supports it. I'm gonna give it only eight gigabytes of memory. You're gonna make sure this is set to create a virtual hard disk now. This, will, this here will vary depending on your, how much memory you have. But I'm gonna give it about 100 gigabytes. Actually, yeah, that's, that's fine. And then leave it at VDI and dynamically allocated. Press create. We're gonna change a few settings now. You're gonna go here. You're gonna make sure this is all checked. Processor, leave it at one. Under display, we're not, we're not gonna touch anything here. But under storage, you're gonna go empty. Choose a disk file and select your and just select your Snow Leopard ISO. Actually, I've forgotten. Here we need to uncheck floppy. Can't forget that. Should be able to press OK here. Now, this is important. You need to close VirtualBox now or these next steps are not going to work. Scroll all the way down to Windows System, Command Prompt, right click it, More, Run as Administrator. Press Yes at the prompt. Now we have our Command Prompt. I've already got the commands right here. You can go ahead and type these in. But first, I forgot. You got to see type this command cd c colon backslash program files. Make sure it's case sensitive. Jeez, my typing is not. Oracle virtual box. Then it's not exactly case sensitive, but it's recommended to. It's definitely space sensitive. I don't know if that's a word, but basically I mean like with spaces. So go ahead and put these commands in and run them. I think I typed something at the end. There you go. These first commands are gonna set video memory and amount of CPUs and stuff. Then these next commands are gonna set extra data like the stuff that it needs to know it's on a real Mac. Not as much need, is needed to convince it this time. So then you should be able to close the command prompt. I'm gonna close this and this. We're gonna go ahead and open VirtualBox. Go ahead and start that virtual machine. Wait for it to load. It shouldn't be slow for me. Press cancel right there. Let's see if this works. It worked when I did it. You'll see a bunch of text. Okay, it is working. If it gets stuck at MIG table max disk right at the top, you will know that you you haven't executed the commands to make it think it's on a real Mac. Because that's what happened to me when I was test running this. So this is going to go ahead and load. Shouldn't take that long. It never really does. But should load just fine. Let's see how long this takes. If it takes, let's see, we're currently at four minutes. If it goes into like the six minute mark, then I'm just gonna cut this out. It's still running. If it gets stuck at system shutdown false, don't be confused. Usually that takes a minute or two to continue from there. So even if it, you really only want to stop it and, and know you know there's an error if it waits from if it stops for more than five minutes at one piece of text. That's when you know something's wrong. Okay, here we are. We're on the Mac OS X install screen. You're gonna go ahead and select your language. There's a, there is something we have to do before we set up the installation. So you're going to go up to Utilities, select Disk Utility, and then this will load itself up. I'm going to select, you need to select VBox Hard Disk, go to Erase, set to be Mac OS Extended Journals. I, you can call this whatever you want, but I'm going to call it Macintosh Hard Drive. 
You don't need to mess with the security options. In fact, these are way faster. Well, they're actually no, they take way longer. This one's way faster. So just don't, just ignore that. Go ahead and press erase. This will just erase itself. Usually doesn't take long. Okay, it's done. This is our partition here. We can close this now. And now we can set it up. So, I'm just gonna press continue. Agree to the license agreement. Select the disk. You can press customize if you want. If you wanna do add some things like Xcode, I think is one of them. I think I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna add these. I don't need to, but I'm going to. Let's see. So, just press install. Then it will go ahead and install itself. Now this part is gonna take some time. So you're probably, I'm gonna cut out the video. I'll be back when it has finished. As you can see, it takes some time. Okay guys, I am back. It's succeeded and it's all finished. And right side up, go ahead and select your country to begin with. Select your keyboard. You can do this if you want. I'm not going to. You can enter your Apple ID here. I'll go ahead and sign in. Now I need two-step verification, but this doesn't seem to work with that. Now register information. Yeah. I don't think I need to really do that. Don't want to send it. You can go ahead and create your account and set a password. You know, just really the usual here. Then you can set a hint if you want. I'm not going to set one. Yes. Actually, I'm just going to, yeah, no. It'll create an account. And it'll connect with Apple and talk with them and do all sorts of stuff. It usually shouldn't take that long, but we'll see how long this takes. I know it should have internet. Most of the time with VirtualBox, especially with Macs, you don't have to worry about internet. It sets it up for you and loops it through your current connection down here, which is Ethernet for me. But... Basically, it's connecting with Apple. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I might might cut this out. We'll see how long. Actually, never mind. Okay. So I'm going to select the time zone here. I believe I'm central. But I don't see it. I can't seem to find something close to that. So I'm just going to go ahead and... I don't even see a central. Hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll find, I'll, I'll get this working, I'm sure. But basically you'd set your time zone here and it will go ahead and, it's a little laggy for me. I only give it eight gigabytes of memory, but that really shouldn't be bad for a Mac. In fact, that my old Mac over there, that's black and is 2006 that runs this. It works just fine with running only four gigabytes of memory, but Seems to be loading pretty slow right now. Just want to make sure I'm still recording. Hmm. Hmm. I might have to stop the recording to continue on. Um, I'm going to go ahead and wait just a few more seconds. Wait like one more minute. See if it loads. Okay. It's loading. These don't seem to be any time zones I'm used to. I'm just going to select one. But then there you go. Your Mac is set up, or at least our virtual one. If you press OK, you'll be taken right to the desktop. Now, an important note I want to go over. This isn't really like urgent to where like you need to really do this. But this is just a little fact. But first of all, you're going to want to do your keyboard identifying if you aren't using Mac keyboard. This should work with this with this keyboard, so you can go ahead and follow the instructions. So make sure this is correct, and press done. 
and you'll notice you've got everything. But one more thing, you, you might want to unmount the install DVD. If you do this, it usually fails. Don't force unmount it, you could lose data. What you need to do instead is simply unmount it from here, and you'll notice it automatically does it. But another quick note, you'll notice there's no app store when you first get it, Mac OS X software. If you click this, it will take you into Safari and you won't, you'll know, get to the downloads page of Apple support where of course there's no software. So to fix this, I just wanted to let you guys know if you want to get apps from the app store, you're gonna need to update it in system preferences. No, a note about this, about this virtual Mac is that you can do software updates and upgrade it and all that stuff. So if you just head to software update and check now, you can go ahead and install the combo update to 10.6.8 from 10.6 and that will give you the Mac app, well the, IT, the app store as it's called. But anyways, I'm going to end the video here. Shouldn't be anything else other than that. So yeah guys, that's going to do it for this video. Everyone, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.